Okay, I just recorded one of these. I think I rambled way too much, so I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes and try it again. Uh, this is Nabil. Um, thank you so much for uh, your love and your support. Over the past week, I announced eight days ago that um, I have received this diagnosis. Let me give you a little bit of background. Um, this is kind of a scary disease insofar as uh, nobody saw it coming, not even my doctors. Um, so back in December, I started getting a little bit of indigestion. No big deal at all. I've had indigestion before. Take some Tums, you'll be fine. Uh, a few months later, the pain started getting a bit worse. Um, and so I decided to go in to see a doctor and the doctor gave me Prilosec and said, hey, come back uh, if this doesn't work. Come back in about a month's time, after a month's time, if this doesn't work. Well, I was studying for exams, um, which you were praying for. Thank you so much for praying for my exams. Uh, they went very well. Um, anyhow, uh, after a month, the Prilosec didn't help that much, so I decided to go back to the doctor, but only after my exams were done because I didn't have time to go before that. So it was June at that point, as it was more like three months. <coughs> and um, when I went into the doctor, he said, look, your, your blood works healthy, you look healthy, you've lost a little bit of weight, but that's just because you're not able to eat as much. I'll, I'll send you to the GI doc, but I really think you're fine. The GI doctor took a look and he said, you know, I see a lot of people in their young 30s, a lot of men who come in with irritation at their esophagus, and that's probably what this is. Um, so we'll scope you just to be sure, um, but uh, I'm very confident that this isn't too big a problem. We'll be able to fix you and, and take care of you. When they scoped me um, was two weeks ago, and that's when they saw something very concerning. Uh, cut to four days later, um, and uh, the diagnosis was uh, stage four stomach cancer, uh, specifically in a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma arising probably from the gastric cardia. And so uh, the prognosis of survival uh, to five years is 4% chance. So I knew I needed a miracle. <laughs> I know still that I need a miracle. Um, and the days since then, and for those of you who are doing the math, that was exactly on the 11th anniversary of my accepting Christ that I found out that news. And I've spent a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time in prayer. Um, we have a prayer room downstairs and it's seen a lot more use than normal in the past two weeks. Um, just asking God, pleading to God, uh, to not take me away from my wife and from my daughter, um, and also to not undo the work that's been done, because um, I know what's going to happen is, because uh, it's already happening, <laughs> it's people are saying, look, look at Nabil, he left Islam, and because of that, Allah has cursed him. Uh, and so all the work that I've done um, has the potential to be anti-work. Uh, this is what happens when you listen to this guy. Uh, I'm not gonna leave Islam, I'm not even gonna think about leaving Islam. Uh, that's what people are going to think and say, unless the Lord comes to his rescue and rescues his name. Um, um, usually we find in the Christian community itself that whenever there is any type of information like this being uh, any news like this of any type of figure in the Islamic community, sadly, there are some people. Um, who would try to take advantage of this and try to call this some type of divine justice. And I believe that's horrible. And, and I would, any Muslim that actually does that, I would say that they are not going, um, they're not practicing the methodology of Islam. Um, but of course, I mean, just to give some examples, like what we found with Ahmed D. Dot, anybody that would type and search Ahmed D. Dot death, you'll find a sway of Christian channels that are actually celebrating this situation. And we have to recognize, um, I mean, there's one prime example, you know, Road, Road to Jesus, for example, he's Ahmed Didat's end, was, uh, were all the lies worth it? Or for example, um, this channel where it says, question, who silenced Ahmed Didat? Answer, Yahweh, God of the Bible. And it's quite interesting that this person, this individual that put this uh, video up, he actually has a video of Nabil Qureshi. 
Now, we're not here to do that because we don't believe it's part of our methodology in Islam. We don't necessarily believe that a sickness is something negative, right? It could be something that actually guides you. And this is what we hope that this does for Brother Nabil Qureshi. Because at the end of the day, with all this apologetics, right? We tend to, of course, at times we take it personally, but that's not really what it is at the end of the day. And even, even Christians themselves, um, we seem sometimes to forget that we're doing this because we actually care. We care about them. We care about humanity. We want to help them. And it should be like that on both sides, right? We sh and that's what, that's what I was stating in the last video, that there's a generic hateful type of, and I, have, I, I hate to say this, but a supremacist type of view of apologetics that's coming out of the Christian community that is racist and Islamophobic and the love is lost there, right? The love and caring for the individual is lost there and there's just a pure hatred. And I don't think that's right. And I would suggest for the Muslims to stir away from that and don't look at this as some type of divine justice or something like that and hope and pray that this is used and utilized to actually help Nabil Qureshi step back and actually look what he's done with his life and see what type of legacy he wants to leave, right? 